So here we go. Uh, the goal of this video is to try to walk you guys through uh, how you might convert a piece of code that uses mutation to one that does not. Uh, in other words, we are illustrating store passing style here. Uh, I'm going to break this video up into 15 minute pieces. Uh, okay, I started my timer now. And I want to apologize in advance for sound quality and people you might hear in the background and all of the good, story, good stuff. Uh, also, you'll want to probably acquire the source files and I expect to post those to Piazza so that uh, everyone can see those files beforehand. All right, so what we're beginning with here is in fact an implementation of Quicksort, uh, specifically the classical, um, extremely mutation heavy pointer swapping version of Quicksort, not the one line functional version. Uh, let's talk first about, let's take a uh, first look at the, uh, the way that we're going to test it. Um, here is a simple file that uh, tests uh, mutation. Specifically, it uh, produces a list of the numbers one through four, and in fact, each one occurs twice, and then we're going to consider every possible permutation of that, and we're going to check that the sorting works correctly on all of that. So we essentially have lists of length eight, and uh, that seems to be about as big as we can get without totally uh, overwhelming the, the memory, um, without using more than a megabyte. No, no, sorry, a gigabyte of memory. Um, half a gig, actually. All right, so uh, this thing just calls the quicksort, and then here's the actual function that we're calling. Uh, quicksort, uh, I'm gonna walk through this real quick, uh, just so that we have some idea of what's going on. Uh, the basic idea is that it just calls a helper function uh, with the vector, and it tells says start at zero, and then uh, go up to the length of the vector. Uh, this QSort helper uh, performs the quicksort algorithm, which turns out to look like this. Uh, we have to pick a position uh, for the pivot, uh, we find the value of that pivot. Uh, then we perform a scan uh, to separate the elements smaller from the, than the pivot from the elements larger than the pivot. And uh, in so doing, we also ensure that the value just before um, the split is in fact the pivot. Uh, so uh, having figured that out and having returned the first larger position, uh, what we're going to do is recursively sort the stuff on the left uh, and the stuff on the right, uh, being careful to uh, not include the pivot itself. This is what guarantees that the thing actually converges. All right, so here we go. Here are the two loops. Uh, Quicksort, it turns out, is an absolute beast. Getting this right is a mess. I kind of had no idea what a pain it would be, but it works. All right, as far as I can tell. Uh, for <laughs> Well, I can guarantee that it works on, on lists of length eight or shorter. All right. So here we go. We have uh, this basic loop. This loop is scanning uh, starting at the left end until it finds an element which is larger than the pivot. So uh, if it runs past the end pointer, then we're all done. Uh, if it doesn't, we need to keep scanning in, until we find one. If we do find one, then we need to start scanning from the top to find another element that needs to be uh, swapped. Uh, it's perhaps worth mentioning that in the case in which we have succeeded, that is to say the last uh, pointer is now reversed with the first pointer, uh, and, and therefore all of the elements have been separated, there is one final thing we need to do, which is to ensure, as I mentioned before, that the pivot occurs immediately before the split, and that's what this uh, vector swap accomplishes. All right, so let's take a quick look at the second loop, which looks a lot like the first loop. Uh, in the only difference is that it's scanning down from the top to find an element that is smaller uh, than the pivot. Once again, if the two pointers overlap, then the whole thing is, is done, and we need to ensure that the pivot is in the right place and return. Uh, if uh, this value is uh, greater than the pivot, well, then we don't care, and we're just going to decrement the uh, pivot, uh, sorry, the last, you've got the sub one, last, and keep on looping. Uh, when we've found one uh, to swap, then we're going to go ahead and swap it, and we need to be a little careful here just in case we accidentally moved the pivot, because we are trying to keep track of where the pivot is so that, as I mentioned before, we can swap it into the right place when we're done. And the last thing here is the vector swap, which just swaps two elements of, of a vector. Okay, so that took about five minutes, uh, but hopefully we now understand the code, at least, that it is that we're trying to convert. So. Uh, the goal here, then, is to translate this to store passing style. In other words, rather than using the uh, features of mutation that are included in the language, we are going to model those by 
passing around an immutable data structure. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to need is some notion of a store. Okay, and um, a store is a map from numbers to, in this case, the only values we care about are numbers, so we'll just say two numbers. And we can write that as uh, define type alias mm, store uh, to be hash of uh, number number. Okay, uh, that sounds fine. Uh, let's also define the empty one. Empty store is just going to be hash uh, empty. Okay, that's the empty uh, store. Uh, now, we're going to need some functions here, uh, specifically the operations that we probably want on our store or so are something that uh, fetches uh, an element from the store and something that updates an element of the store. All right, so uh, fetch an element fr uh, from the store. This part is easy. Uh, define fetch from store. By the way, I am going to, in the interest of time, I'm going to omit test cases from some of these. Although having said that, I always wind up doing it anyway. Okay, here we go, test. Test, uh, fetch from store. Uh, if I want memory location three uh, from the store uh, containing hash list uh, values, uh, location two maps to one, two, three, four, and location uh, three maps to nine, 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 and uh, values four, they don't have to be contiguous, 10 maps to a large number. Uh, we hope that the result should be 9999. And <laughs> I should probably stop now. Well, no? All right, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> All right. This is, this is the problem with only having Tuesday and Thursday classes is you have to do ridiculous makeup lectures online. Sorry, I, I should... Oh, sorry, sorry. You're, you're, you're dictating yeah, 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 yeah. I'm recording this stuff, but but only because I'm not because I'm not teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. So, yeah. Anyway. Why right. are you recording this? Well, I'm recording this because when you give a... When you have a Tuesday, Thursday class and you give a midterm on Tuesday and you have an assignment that's due the following Thursday, a full week later, uh, there's not going to be another class until next Tuesday, which gives students only two days to... So we have to cover more material, and uh, it's a mess. Anyway, that's that's sort of the yeah. <laughs> Long so and short of that. Your screams about uh, the operating system were part of the lecture you were recording. Uh, only peripherally. I should probably return to the topic at hand. I'm wasting students' valuable time. I'll tell you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're recording this. Yes, yes, yes. I'm recording right now. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and just do a hash ref. Um, sorry, yes, this is going to take in um, the pointer. Uh, pointer, which is a number, and the store, which is of type sto, and it's simply going to do hash ref uh, store um, pointer. OK, kind of a silly function. Okay, ah, yes, we immediately run up against one of the interesting things about using hashes, which is that they return options. Uh, that is to say, uh, if you try to do a hash ref, it may fail. Uh, and you deal with that by uh, checking for it explicitly. Type case uh, option option of number this guy, and it might turn out to be in the hash, and in that case, we are going to return it. Uh, else, now here's the question, what should happen when we look up a memory location that's not there? All right, you can imagine multiple possibilities here, uh, but in the interest of debugging, let's just say it's not legal to refer to uh, unallocated memory, so we can just signal an error here. Uh, fetch from stow uh, unallocated memory location. Uh, let's let's make it useful. Write up a uh, string append of this guy and two string of the pointer. Um, right. Okay. There we go. Uh, we've got something useful now. We hope. Uh, and then um, let's just make sure that our test cases all still pass, and they do. All right. Uh, next thing is we're going to need a set 
uh, uh, mutate an element in the store. Uh, define uh, update store. Uh, we've got a pointer, which is a number. We've got a uh, new value, which is going to be a number in this case. And we've got a store, which is going to be a stow. All right, so in this case, uh, let's do a quick, um, okay, let's do a quick update here. If we say uh, update store, memory location three is now going to be 23. Uh, then the result of this, thank you, uh, the result of this, uh, should be the same hash only three should be replaced by 23 let's see if this is if we can make this work uh, it's a simple hash set hash set uh, store of uh, pointer to be new val well that's kind of a one-line function okay it's kind of trivial uh, hopefully it works this all depends on how it quality yes excellent we're good okay uh, we have a couple of tests there, that's good. Now we now have a, a store and we're ready to start deploying it. Uh, the first thing that let's do is to make sure that it is passed to the functions that need it, okay? So uh, in the interest of keeping things working, uh, we're going to pass it around everywhere before we start using it at all. The number one, so, so what we're looking for here is the operations that actually mutate, uh, perform mutation. So those are gonna be um, a uh, vector set and Okay, so here you go, vector set bang. Let's look for those. There's two of those, okay? And they're both in vector swap, okay? So we're going to need to, this thing is going to have to take in a store uh, as an argument. Uh, okay, I think we call it stow. Did we call it stow? I forget. All right, so for now, we're just uh, literally passing that. Let's check, just check if it's called a stow. Yeah, it is stow. Um, now, of course, uh, all calls to this thing need to also have the store so that they can pass it in. All right, let's find those. We're going to be back swap. Uh, this guy is need to, going to need to have uh, the store. And let's find this other one. This one's also going to have to need the store. And sure enough, now we have an unbound variable. And so what this means is that, oh dear, these functions are also going to have to have the store uh, in order to... Um, in order to be able to call vector swap. Uh, sto is sto. Okay, uh, that looks fine. But of course, now we have uh, more type check failures because do qsort loop one and do qsort loop two both need to get uh, the store. So now we gotta recursively fix up both of those. Um, loop one, let's find all the calls to loop one. And these guys now need a store as an argument. And let's find this one here also needs the store as an argument. And this one here also needs the store as an argument. And this one here also needs the store as an argument. And so does this one. And so does this one. Okay, now we've got to patch up the use of um, the use of the store that is right here. Okay, so the problem right here is, oh dear, QSort helper also needs a store. Okay, you may st be starting to get the feeling that everything is going to take the store. In fact, that's more or less correct. Everything will have to take the store. Uh, there may be some small stub helper functions in your program that don't, and but in this one, it will literally have to be passed in everywhere. Let's just see where the problem is. Okay, so now uh, we need to, uh, yes, we need to know what store it is we're passing in here. This one should be the empty store, at least for now. Empty store and empty store. And now we're once again gonna have type check failures, uh, specifically when you call where I am. Here I am, QSort helper. Uh, yeah, that's not a control L, control L, there we go. Uh, this guy now needs to have the store. Oh dear, we're going to have to add it up here. So, okay. so uh, we're basically adding it everywhere. Okay, uh, there's a call on line 59, and the issue here is that we need to pass store to the QSort helper, and here we also need to pass it to the QSort helper, and now on line 60, goodness, 
we also have a type check failure because why is this? Oh, let's just run it so we can get some better information here. QSort helper. Really? And number, QSort helper. Vector length. Vector. Oh, oh, look, I put it in the wrong place. Oh, my 15 minutes is up. Okay, I should probably. Um, I just love to get this thing to type check. Okay, he doesn't even do anything useful here. This guy also needs stow, and now 129. So I'm going to get this guy to type check again. And in fact, um, it will even. Ah, uh, uh, yes, this is a good one. Uh, it will even run and pass all the tests because, in particular, although we're now passing it everywhere, we're still not using it at all. Uh, so I still expect those tests to pass, and I also expect those tests to pass, although this one now needs to know what an empty store is. Yes, it does. And so we should put in, mm, well, for now we can just put in an empty store here, uh, hash uh, empty. And uh, away we don't go. Uh, yes, because the contract here. This won't affect you because you're not writing in the in the racket language. Uh, you're writing in the PLA and type language. Yes, it's all still works. My 15 minutes is up. My 15 minutes of fame is up. Uh, I'm going to halt this, and then I'm going to start recording again, just so that we don't have to deal with insanely long uh, videos. Goodbye.